The story begins in Salem, New England in the year 1693. Young Thackeray notices how his sister Emily is lured by a witch and follows her to her house deep in the forest. He gains access to the house and observes three witches inside brewing a potion with which they intend to suck the life out of the young girl. As the witches attempt to harm his sister, Thackeray intervenes, causing quite a disturbance, but he cannot prevent them from carrying out their plan. The witches use the potion to suck the life force out of the young girl, rejuvenating themselves in the process. The poor young boy is cursed by the three witches. They transform him into a black cat, doomed to live forever in this form. Shortly thereafter, the enraged villagers of Salem, rightfully accusing the three sisters of witchcraft, gather to charge them. At the gallows, the witches cast one final curse, stating that if a virgin lights the black-flamed candle on Halloween, the three witches will return to Earth. 300 years later, in 1993, we meet Max Dennison, who has just moved to Salem with his family from Los Angeles. He arrives home in a bad mood after a rather unpleasant day at school. Soon after, we also meet his little sister, Danny, who wants to scare her brother. The two of them go trick-or-treating together, but Max seems extremely unenthusiastic. When they encounter a group of bullies, they make Max look pretty foolish and take his candies. During their tour, they also arrive at Allison's house, Max's secret crush. The three of them discuss the legend of the three Sanderson sisters' witch house and decide to visit the house together. They explore the house together and discover various old relics, including the black flame candle. They contemplate lighting it. While the two girls decide to leave the house, Max doesn't take it very seriously and lights the candle. This action triggers the ancient curse and brings the witches back to life. The witches catch Danny's scent and immediately intend to steal her youth. Max tries to intervene, but the witches paralyze him with their magic. Allison also steps in, and together they manage to escape. Max keeps the witches at bay with a trick, and when the black cat reveals itself and orders Max to steal the witch's spellbook, he does so promptly. Then, everyone escapes from the witches. The black cat leads them to an old cemetery, which the witches cannot enter because it's consecrated ground. The witches need to find the book quickly because it contains the spell that can grant them continued life. However, they have only this one Halloween night to do so, or else they will crumble to dust by the end of Halloween. The three witch sisters arrive on their broomsticks and surround the group. The witches resurrect a dead person in the cemetery to drive the group away. The four of them flee into an old crypt on the cemetery. The witches instruct the undead to continue pursuing the group. Meanwhile, the three witches roam through the town and familiarize themselves with life in 1993. However, they don't really encounter a warm welcome everywhere they go. Max and the rest of the group visit their parents, but their parents don't believe them. Max takes the microphone to make a big announcement at his parents' Halloween party, but the other adults still don't take him seriously, even in the presence of the Sanderson sisters. The kids then escape, and the witches pursue them. They lure the witches into the abandoned high school to trap them there. They trap them in the oven, Hansel and Gretel style, and roast them. The group believes they've put an end to the witches. They happily make their way home. But of course, they celebrated too soon, and the three sisters are immediately resurrected. They're not so easily defeated. When the three sisters encounter the local bullies shortly afterward, the boys have picked the wrong fight and find themselves locked up. However, without their book, they can't prepare the potion they need to stay alive longer. Max and Allison want to help Thackeray, who is forever cursed in the form of a black cat, and they come up with the idea of consulting the witch's spellbook for a solution. They think that since the witches are now dead, nothing can go wrong, even though they were explicitly warned not to open the book. When the kids open the book, it sends a signal into the outside world, which the witches detect. They immediately set off to retrieve the book. Thackeray intervenes and closes the book. But it's already too late, and the witches have arrived at Max's house and taken the book and Danny. Danny is kidnapped by the witches, and Sarah sends out a witch's call to lure the children of Salem to the witch's house. Since the witches only have time to break the curse until sunrise, Max and Allison come up with a plan to outsmart them. The red headlights of the car with which they arrived evoke nasty memories among the witches of the villagers with their fiery torches. The trick works, distracting the sisters, and the two manage to free Danny and escape. As the witches recover, they continue their pursuit. When they arrive at the graveyard where the kids are, they engage in a final battle. After some back and forth, they manage to grab Danny. Just as the head witch is about to begin the ritual, the cat rushes to help, causing her to lose the potion. Max grabs it and drinks it himself. I guess he didn't consider just spilling it out. 
Anyway, now the head witch must continue the ritual with him and tries to suck the life out of him before the sun rises. But the sun rises just in time, causing the three witches to be turned to stone and then disintegrate. So, the kids have managed to save the day. With the witches gone, the curse on Thackeray is finally broken and his soul can rest in peace, reunited with his sister. That was Hocus Pocus from 1993, a light-hearted spooky comedy for the whole family. I hope you enjoyed this recap and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Feel free to subscribe if you want more high-quality, handcrafted recaps. Until next time!